bad news to some and good news to others. It's, a, it's an example of just how divided the city has become. Uh, the judge's language was quite stern, uh, a sense, a stubborn sense of entitlement, dismissive and confrontational. These are words that cannot be ignored. The question is, how quickly can we bring the city together to get Toronto to now move forward? They've been trying to function and trying to invest in their city in a leadership vacuum. We need Torontonians all working on the, the future of the city and the city's well-being. So hopefully we take the judge's decision and move on with those things that are up to council. And that is who is going to lead the city for the next few months. Uh, what would you like to see happen uh, if the mayor, say, he is not granted a stay and he is told he has to step aside, he has moved from office, where do you see council going? What would you like to see happen? Well, I'm, uh, I'm the kind of person who really wants to hear what the city manager and the solicitor have to say because there are a range of options. Um, uh, certainly, the city is going back to the polls in 2014 anyway. So the question is, how do we weigh the expense of an election versus the uh, the challenges that we face in today's economy? Some of the things that are key in the city's agenda when we don't have an elected leader in place. So that's kind of a top Hobson's choice, and, and council's going to need probably a special meeting to figure that out. I really want to hear what the professionals have to say. We've got to remember here that that's, uh, that's one of the, the judge's criticism of Mayor Ford is that there has been a lack of due diligence in, in always seeking professional advice in a difficult situation. And this is the most difficult situation the new city has ever faced. Um, Joe Mahevic described it as a good day for justice, but a, bad, a sad day for the city of Toronto. How would you describe it? Well, it is a sad day for the city of Toronto, except that really what we can do is say we faced this challenge once before in the new city of Toronto with the uh, Justice Bellamy's report on the MFP computer scandal. Uh, back in the day. What this is a re is a reinforcement of those accountability offices that were put in place as a result of Justice Bellamy's report. Now we have another judge in a court of law saying those rules are important when you were running. would be one that he would put forward. He would like to do that. Is that something you would consider doing? I would certainly consider that because uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Holliday is not only a, a councillor elected by Torontonians in his ward, but he's also been uh, uh, confirmed as the deputy mayor uh, when, the, when the city council, the new city council, made its decisions back in December of 2010. So he would definitely be a candidate for that job. There are a number of issues in uh, the judge's ruling uh, regarding uh, the mayor can run for an election after the current term. So we've heard his comments about a by-election this morning and we don't know if he can actually do what he said he could do this morning. If ever he was going to take the judge's advice and do some due diligence and listen carefully to professional advice, he better do it today. Now, I, sorry, I thought I meant, um, would you consider putting your name forward to lead counsel, not Doug Holliday? Doug Holliday has already said he would, but is that something you would consider doing? Oh, putting my name forward now and in a by-election? Council has to first make the decision as to whether or not it wants to hold a by-election without the distraction of whether it's to, it's to put certain people's names on the table. We've got to decide if a by-election. Once we've decided uh, uh, that, then I think individuals can come forward. You don't want to be camping on graves today, and you don't want to be confusing council's professional de decision. But I have always said I am absolutely considering uh, uh, running for mayor in this city. Uh, I want to get this city to the point where we're moving forward and we're moving a long game and getting back to the agenda of the city. And that is that we are prepared to be a real competitor in a global economy, that we get back to the strong, world-famous environmental agenda that we have had for over the last decade in this city until the current administration. All of those things that are so much more important to Torontonians are now possible. Councillor, do you think there should be a by-election or do you think that council should appoint someone? Well, I think that, that in the, the early hours after the verdict, we haven't really uh, uh, paid attention to, to some of the, the precedent setting uh, next steps. Uh, the, the concept of appointing is possible. The question of the judge's uh, comment that the mayor uh, uh, can only run when the current term is finished. Um, so I, I suspect that there are some councillors who are still strong supporters of the mayor who will use that as part of their decision-making process. 
I think we've got to hear what the professionals have to say. In the meantime, we've got to make sure that we're making sure Torontonians understand that we're going to do the due diligence the judge has spoken of. That that has been lacking in the last two years, we're going to take his advice. We're going to seek that professional advice. We're going to do due diligence. So and that mind. probably won't happen until the 14 days or so. So you haven't made up your mind whether it's more appropriate to have a by-election or to uh, come up with a clear Oh, I think, it, I think it would be to, to uh, ignore the judge's advice to make up my mind today. We need that due diligence. That's the judge's recommendation, that we're not going to, 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 to uh, uh, go about with a stubborn sense of entitlement. We're not going to uh, uh, ignore professional advice. That is what the judge cautioned Mayor Ford not to do, and it's why he's been removed from office. But do but you think it, it is appropriate to have potentially someone filling that job appointed by council for two years? I mean, it wasn't long ago that a term was two years. Well, I think we. Well, I think uh, you know. I don't want to answer the the clerk's questions and the city manager's questions today, but I think it's fair to hear from them. How many months would it take you to get an election ready? Uh, uh, what would it cost? And and how many months would you be in office? And how how would that person make that decision? Because if the because if the reality is it's, it's less than a full twelve months that they would actually be effective, then we're in a policy vacuum anyway, and we've got to find a way out of it. And I I have great faith in council. Because frankly, quite frankly, in order to make real decisions and move real policies forward, it has been council that has been leading the city for the last several months. And would you, if there was an appointment, would you put, like, if there was a need to appoint someone, would you put your name into that, that well, discussion as well? Well, I'm focused on the, the long future of this city. And so uh, another thing that's often happened in, in these types of situations is uh, uh, sometimes we appoint uh, on the understanding that you may never run again for this office. And if that's the case, I'm going to really have to give it a, give it some thought. So uh, you haven't decided yet, but I mean, does a vote in the next few months make it more or less likely that Kelly Carroll will be a, a candidate than, than, say, in 2014? Well, 2014 seems to be a, a date unto itself, given the judges' timelines. And so 2014 is still a very exciting year in the city of Toronto. There is no question about that. But would you run for mayor before that, if there were a by-election before that? That depends on the advice of all of the, the uh, city staff. So we're a long way from that. I'm not going to make a, uh, uh, a flash decision on, on that score today. Um, Council's agenda this week is extremely loaded. It is a very intense agenda. We have things such as uh, uh, the solid waste budget. Uh, everyone wants to know what the effect is on their bin rate and on the future of the city's environment. The Toronto water budget. People want us to deliberate over those things. So I'm going to suggest, if, if we're being briefed on this tomorrow, I'm going to suggest that that long deliberation over what the next steps are has to come in a separate meeting after this session is over so that we give it the due diligence the judge has recommended. So you're not going to be asking the city solicitor or the clerk tomorrow for advice on I think that if we do that, that will not be our best day because it will be uh, uh, a rush for them, although they've done some preparing for all scenarios, but it would definitely be a rush for council. What do you think is the impact of this ruling is going to have on the relationship on every month? does a great deal of good work for the City of Toronto on a consensus basis uh, before we even get into those debatable matters at, at, at Council. And this is one of those moments when they're going to hear from the City of Toronto that people are feeling very, very uncertain about the, the future of the city, the future of their jobs, the, uh, the future of building housing in this city. All of those things are things we need to give people confidence in. And there have been times in the past when, because that's important, all of council has gotten together and worked together. I have faith that they'll be able to do it again. Is it a good thing then for, a, like in this instance, a citizen has brought a complaint against an elected official and it's expected to force them out of office. Is that something that is going to be good down the road, or is that going to invite challenges to everybody who is elected constantly throughout their term? Well, I don't think it's the citizen that any politician should fear. The citizen is someone we should love. But the judge is someone that we have to have a healthy respect for. If you are swearing an oath, you are swearing your, your uh, career on a legal document. And what the judge is saying is you'd better know what you're promising to do. Because if you don't, and you willfully, you willfully uh, uh, proceed with ignorance, it was uh, willful ignorance, and those are the judge's words, then that judge is going to level a consequence. 
eventually. Uh, that's what we have to have the respect for.